Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I have a different kind of video for you today. This is a video that contains information that I had hoped one day to put in a book, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. So these YouTube videos might serve as a, a nice way of getting the information out and having some reach. I think there's an audience for this stuff, but uh, let me tell you what it's all about. So people know me primarily as an astrophotographer, but I actually think one of my best skill sets is the creation, development, and uh, delivery of stargazing programs. That is, public outreach programs in astronomy. That's the thing that I did for 20 years, and I learned an awful lot about it. I have very specific knowledge um, about the creation and delivery of these kinds of programs. And so some of that, I think, can be useful uh, to many different kinds of people. If, you're, if you have your own telescope and you've ever tried to show things to people through your telescope, you know what a challenge that can be. You can also, people know what kind of challenge it is, not just to show people things in a telescope, but then explain what it is they're seeing and how it is connected to other really fantastic things in the universe. These grand perspectives are one of the things that I would highlight in my particular presentations. So I graduated uh, from the U University of Arizona in 1996 and I very shortly afterwards heard that the National Observatory, Kitt Peak, wanted to create and develop public outreach stargazing programs uh, out of their visitor center. They had just constructed a small telescope to begin these presentations. They wanted to invite people to come up every night and look through the telescope and have this marvelous experience to see everything from planets to other galaxies. That was really exciting to me. So I applied for the position, they hired me, and then I worked there for the next nine years or so developing those programs. I learned a lot. I mean, a ton of stuff about people, about how uh, they interact with the telescope, about how people learn things, all kinds of cool things. It was also a privilege. I mean, I, was, I stood with tens of thousands of people and learned um, to share that experience. For many people, it was their first time seeing many of these facets of the universe and getting that kind of grander feeling of their place within it. So for me, it was, uh, yeah, as I say, an honor and a privilege to be able to be that person, to be that guide at the time. I had a great time, but I wanted to do bigger and better. So after my experience at Kitt Peak, it took me a little bit of time to get it started up. But I approached the University of Arizona in 2007, and I wanted to create an even bigger and better program. And that became the, the foundation for what is now called the Mount Lemmon Sky Center. And at the time, it was a, literally a new destination for stargazing here in the Southwest. So I feel the combination of my work at the National Observatory and then the creation of the Mount Lemmon Sky Center, in some sense, I really think that I shaped stargazing programs here in the Southwest. Uh, and uh, like I said, just a fantastic experience, but I learned a lot. And so I'd like to give back some of the information that I did learn. And today what I'd like to talk about is what I learned surprisingly from the disinterested. That is not the people that I would normally deal with in the course of those jobs, but people who willfully did not want to look through an eyepiece and see anything at all. I had that experience when I was still in college because I ran the Campus Station Telescope. It's a 21-inch reflecting telescope, and it was used for the general education courses that many people would take. They had to take a certain number of science courses. Some people chose astronomy, and the assignment for those students was to go visit the Campus Station Telescope to look through it. That's all they had to do, look through the telescope, and then sketch what they saw, turn that in for their assignment. But there were people who wanted to be elsewhere. They wanted to go to the football game or they wanted to be at a party. They did not want to be at that telescope and look through it. Uh, and so one of the interesting uh, examples I remember is there was a young lady. And one of the things that we had to do as operators, we had to point the telescope at things in the sky, five or six objects. And then, uh, you know, you would want to make sure that they saw it before you moved on. So I remember one young lady, we were pointed at the moon. And I asked her if she could see the moon. And she said, yes, yes, she could see the moon. But when I looked at her face, I could clearly see the image of the moon being projected by the eyepiece on her forehead. I knew she couldn't see the moon because the light was not going into her eye. 
So now what am I going to do? I didn't do anything. I, they, you know, she wasn't interested and that's fine. But I learned something. Of course, I learned that, hey, that's a neat tool. I can use the moon. Certainly every time we point to the moon, I can see literally if the light is going into their eyes. And if it is, I know they're seeing the moon, right? So that's a nice tool. But that can be further developed. And I used these kinds of ideas to my advantage later on. And let me give you uh, the example of what I mean. So one of the things that I specifically did before I would start any presentation in astronomy or, or uh, that dealt with looking through a telescope is I would explain how to look through an eyepiece. Now you might think, well, how hard could that be? Most people think, how hard could it be to look through this and see something? The answer is it's surprisingly difficult. It takes patience, practice, and I would even argue some perseverance. You literally have to want to see things in here to have any hope of success. And one of the important things to understand is that um, when you look through the eyepiece, being aligned to the eyepiece is super, super critical to being able to see anything at all. In the dark, that's a difficult skill set. One of the things you'll notice on this eyepiece is that it has a, a little white band here. That is a small piece of glow-in-the-dark tape. That can help just to have people be able to find the eyepiece. And I found one of the most critical things, it's surprising, is that to have people see things through the eyepiece well, they need to touch the eyepiece. People who are not touching the eyepiece are generally unable to get their head and eye into the right position because you can take advantage of something that is an anatomy, a physiology that we all enjoy. Our brains know something about our positions of our bodies in space, especially our hands. So even in the dark, you know where the center of your hand is and you could guide your eye up to that if you needed to. So by grasping an eyepiece like this, and I'm using a big eyepiece here, if I had a smaller eyepiece, everything still applies, but this looks nice on camera, right? It's easy to find your way and center your eye when you are cupping the eyepiece like this, because even in the dark, you know where the center of your hand is. Now I'm going to take off my glasses and just indicate that in general, without some guidance here, people will try to look through the eyepiece and they may be looking at some odd angle. In the dark, you may even end up looking at the side of the eyepiece by tactile, you know, actually grasping the eyepiece, it eliminates a lot of those kinds of problems. Now, of course, you never want to touch and tell people, please don't touch the glass. You've got to tell the children don't hang on the eyepiece, but it is okay to lightly grasp it because you're taking advantage of this idea of getting your eye to the right place. That helps, but that's not everything. Uh, there's another element of this, which is to get your eye up to the right place I find that people often end up too far away from the eyepiece. You need to tell people to get close enough. And one of the tools that I would use, especially when there is an a eye cup guard like this, is to tell them. You want to be able to feel that eye cup, uh, this rubber, on either maybe the side of your nose or your eyebrow. That is approximately the right position to be able to see the entire field of view. If you're too far away, it's hard to align, and again, you're not seeing the full field. So that's helpful. Now, if you do wear glasses, that can pose a problem, right? Uh, I would often just tell people, if you're wearing glasses that are not progressive or bifocals and all of that, um, go ahead and just press your glasses. It's not going to harm anything. Uh, it's okay to press them right up against this rubber eye cup. And again, be sure that you're seeing the full field of view. Here's the other uh, very important element of this how I linked what I learned from the disinterested college uh, student to this kind of presentation is that in the beginning of a night, before I would ever show any, anyone anything through the telescope, I will have explained how to uh, touch the eyepiece, how to guide your eye up to the right place, and then I can demonstrate it. Because every nighttime program that I did always began in the daytime sky. We would show through the telescope stars or a planet in the daytime sky. And one of the cool things about the daytime sky is that when you put your eye up to the eyepiece, you can see the daylight shining through the eyepiece. It's easy in the day to align your eye, and it's easy because you can clearly see where you need to be looking. 
people, of course, know that if it's in the daytime and they put their eye to the eyepiece and they see blackness, it, it's obviously they're not aligned. That is less obvious at night. In fact, it leads to an entirely different conversation, which I'd like to make perhaps in another video, which is when people look through the eyepiece, if they did at night see blackness, it just means that it is an alignment problem. It isn't a focus problem. This is another element that I learned through time, is when people don't see anything through a telescope, one of the first uh, assumptions is that it must be because the telescope is out of focus. And so I always explain that in focus or not, you will always see light coming out of and through the eyepiece. If you just see blackness, it means don't touch the focus. Instead, uh, you need to realign your eye so that you're seeing things through the eyepiece. That in and of itself, starting in the daytime sky, is part of what I think made uh, the presentations that I gave so successful because now people really get a chance to feel the eyepiece, to feel what it's like to put their eye in the right place and to easily succeed at that. Um, by the way, this idea of managing focus at a telescope, especially in a public presentation where you might have 20 or more people lined up to look through an eyepiece, you don't want, in general, everyone to adjust the focus because when one person adjusts, then everyone after is going to adjust and that takes an awful long time there's a way to manage focus through a telescope as well to be sure that you're doing things as efficiently as possible and guaranteeing that everyone is getting a good view. But that's for another, uh, that's for another video. In this video though, we're just trying to get our eye up to the eyepiece and see things clearly through it. So looking then in the day and seeing things is easy, but at night it's not so. So people may be doing their best to grasp the eyepiece and they may think they have their eye in the right place, but they don't. Now, what do I do? I mean, I always, you know, you want to take their head and somehow move it around, but you can't do that. You can't see what they see. You can't even see their head, and you certainly can't see what's falling on their eyes if you're showing the Orion Nebula or some bright stars or something like that through a telescope. If you're not looking at the moon, how do you solve the problem? And the answer is you can use tools to help you out. One of the tools that I used was a small flashlight. So I would use a flashlight exactly like this. This is a small LED red flashlight. In fact, this dates from that period when I was at the Kit Peak program. This is 20 years old at least by now. I still have a couple of these things. But it's a small LED red light. And what you do is you shine this down through the telescope, depending upon what kind of telescope you have, but you illuminate uh, the, in my case, reflector, the primary mirror, while the person, the guest, is looking through the eyepiece. And what will happen is, if they back their eye away from the eyepiece at this distance, and you shine the red light through the telescope, you will see that the eyepiece glows a very faint red. That's enough light that the person can then, again, grasping the eyepiece, guide their eye up to the right place so they see a field of red light. They won't see very much other than the red light. And then you remove the red light, the flashlight from the telescope aperture, and then they see whatever it is that you'd like to show them. That trick allowed me to show people, to get people to get their eyes in the right spot and to show people the faintest things in the telescope, things that they would not have otherwise been able to see because they couldn't guarantee. They, they just didn't know if their eyes were in the right place and they were seeing stuff. Then you can, of course, query them. You can ask them, do you see two stars? Do you see a fuzzy cloud? And so on and so forth. And they say yes most of the time. Now, obviously, there is always some fraction of people that not even this would help. Uh, because people's eyesights, of course, uh, come in varying degrees of... Uh, uh, being good, but for a vast majority of people, this simple trick is not one that I've seen ever done at uh, public, uh, you know, stargazing programs that I've seen, not done at university programs that I've seen, but this is an effective way to make sure that people are looking through the eyepiece and actually seeing the rest of the universe. I learned this from disinterested people, and I've always found that fascinating 
and I hope that you can use this particular trick in your own time, perhaps showing things through a telescope and having people get that, that same kind of experience that I enjoyed when I delivered my presentations. So, this is my first attempt at giving some information like that. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about just looking through an eyepiece. And then uh, in the future, I hope to give more information and more videos about what makes an effective public outreach uh, program and, and basically how to make it uh, one of the best in the world. So I will catch you next time in the next video.